before you start making amazing coffee, there's a few things you need to remember with your grinder. Um, always nice fresh beans. And just remember, from the moment you open a bag of beans, within about 12 to 16 hours, that bag rapidly starts to deteriorate in freshness, which will have an impeding quality on your espresso. And from the moment you grind coffee, you're looking at around 11 minutes, and the same thing will happen, a rapid deterioration of the quality. Ideally, you want to have it empty, and every time you make a coffee, grind to order, or on demand, as we say. The worst thing you can do is come in in the morning and switch your grinder on straight away and fill it up all the way to the top because you're always going to be 30 to 40 coffees behind what you're actually looking to serve. If you're going to make any coffee using an espresso machine, really important to remember that you always purge your machine before you use it. What purging does is it stabilizes the brew temperature and makes sure you get rid of any gap in residual coffee from the last brew. Okay, so first we're going to start with a ristretto. A ristretto essentially is a rough translation of Italian and it means restricted. So what we're looking for is, it's almost half an espresso and we're looking for it to stop when it's the colour of praline. All the power, the punch in flavour, but not much of the caffeine, just a residual amount. And we're looking for it to stop slightly short of an espresso, halfway. So this here is going the colour of praline. like now. An espresso is just slightly longer than a ristretto. You're looking to extract an espresso until it's blonding. Every single coffee, origin, roast type, it's all slightly different with the extraction times. But as long as it's blonding in a sensible amount of time, and more importantly it tastes good, that's the most important thing. At the beginning, we're looking for it to be nice and slow, slightly pinching. This is ensuring we've got all the sugar and oil out of the espresso. Slightly speeding up through the extraction. And then we're looking to stop the extraction when it starts to blond. And that's what we call in the trade blonding. Around about there. And that gives you uh, an espresso that's super punchy. Really important with Americano is to make sure you put the water in your cup first before you put the espresso in. It just gives the hot water enough time to slightly lose a little bit of temperature so when you pour the espresso on top, you don't burn it. Of course, if the customer chooses to have milk or not have milk, that's completely up to them. Just remember, an Americano should have as much love, care and attention as any other drink you make. Okay, so now we've done all of our water-based drinks, now we're going to move on to our milk-based drinks. Macchiato first. A rough translation of macchiato is mark. So we're looking to mark one espresso, traditionally, with a spot of foam. There are two ways you can pour a macchiato. Some would use a spoon, or you can pour. Today I'll use a spoon. So you've got your espresso, and you're looking for just a spot of foam on top. Like so. Flat whites. Traditionally a flat white is served with a triple ristretto with just textured milk. But more than often in this country we're looking at a double espresso, maybe just under, with textured milk also. The idea of a flat white is to be small, punchy, strong and easy to drink. It's meant to be strong. In the cocktail industry we call them barman's latte. You're looking for, to stop the extraction just slightly shy of full extraction, just so you've got full sweetness and lots of body. It's almost like a, uh, a three quarters of a double espresso. So now we're going to do cappuccino. The cappuccino we're looking for around about a finger's depth at the top of the cup. Um, traditionally people think a third, a third, a third. Absolutely true if you're using a true cappuccino cup, but obviously as you start to go up in size you would need to increase the amount of espresso and milk as well. So always keep it to just about a finger's depth. And you can check that by driving a spoon through from the top to the bottom. 
Here we're using a double shot because of the size of the cups, but of course it's up to you if you choose to use a double or a single. Okay, remember when you're steaming your milk to add as much air as you need for a cappuccino at the beginning of the extraction run at the end. Keeping these two points together, always keeping your left hand as well on the jug to monitor the temperature and to make it a little bit easier to steam the milk. Keep it spinning, just going to keep that tip just below the surface and as soon as it's too hot for your hand, take it off. Any hotter and you'll start to scold the milk. Now I like to pour my cappuccino with chocolate on top of the crema. So we'll just put that on beforehand, like so. And we'll get my milk ready. And we're looking to fold the milk until it's shiny. And what I'm doing there is I'm pushing the liquid from the bottom up through the foam. So I'm ending up with a consistency really like when you pour a Guinness and it hasn't settled yet. So when I pour, it will settle out in the cup. And that's what stops people using spoons and spatulas and vigorous jerking of the jug to try and get it to come out. It should be one small fluid movement. The idea with a latte is really the same with a cappuccino, you're just looking for slightly less foam texture. Now the difference with the milk textures will be that you put less air in at the beginning when you're steaming the milk than you would with a cappuccino. Then steam up all the way on and not just halfway. And that noise there, the, what we call the is just introducing the air right at the beginning. And you want to do that when it's still cold. And then we're just keeping that tip as close to the surface as possible until it's too hot for your hand. Making sure again not to scald the milk. Okay, so a latte is poured in exactly the same manner as a cappuccino and a flat white. But all I'm doing is when I've steamed the milk, I'm ensuring that I'm putting slightly less air texture in at the beginning which will give me a much looser foam to be working with. So we're looking really for just under a centimetre of foam on the finished drink. 